ஸ்மிருதிபுராணாலயம் கருணாலயம் மாம் எவத்பாதிங்கரம் லோகசிங்கரம் ஓம் நமோ பகவதேஹத்தை ஸ்மை ஜானாமிதமந்தகர்மாத்மனோவாஷாத்தோகேஷாம் மத்தியாத்மனோவர்ட் told yeah so the chariot the chariot driver told to to gautama gautama asked a question and so he is replying to that question idam des sarvat prajana to all people anta karma the final act yeah this is the final act death death is the final act to everybody there is no exception both of i is asking is it meant for only this person or it is the fate of everybody so he is replying it is the fate of everybody everybody one final act is breathing last one last time they breathe that is the end of life for all hinasya to a low person madhyasya to a middle status person mahatmano va or to a great person sarvasya for nirvan loke in the world vinashaha death niyataha inevitable yeah whatever be the person you may be a very lowly person like a sweeper or whatever or maybe a king or a prince mahatmanah or even a saintly person or somewhere in between common people everybody will end in death this is inevitable for everybody niyataha is inevitable is a must that cannot be avoided so that is the answer he gave okay tatah afterwards praneta the driver of the chariot vad tasmay antu dat gautama vadat isma told idam des sarva prajanam to all people anta karma the last act loke in this world hinasya to a lowly person madhyasya or to a middle class person mahatmano va 
or to a saintly person, sarvasya to everyone, vinashaha death, niyataha inevitable. Tataha pranata tasmai vadati sma sarva prajanam idam antakarna loke henasya madhyasya mahatmanova sarvasya vinashaha niyataha tataha Praneta vadatisma tasmai Sarva prajana midamanta karma Henasya madhyasya mahatmanova Sarvasya loke niyato vinashaha Tatasadhiro pinarendra sunuhu Shrutvaiva Murtyum Rishasada Sadhyaha Amsena Samsishya Chaku Varagram Provacha Nirhara Dhavata Svarena Tatas Sadhi Ropi Narendra Sunuhu Shrutvaiva Mrutyum Vishasada Sadhyaha Amsena Samsishya Chakuba Ragram Provacha Nirhrada Vatas Parena You see, in the Hindu society, any talk of death is considered bad. He should not talk about death. This superstition has gone so deep in the Hindu society. In the Hindu society means in the among Brahmins who are supposed to lead this society. Among Brahmins, among the orthodox people. So they don't keep Mahabharata at home. Uh, they don't keep Mahabharata at home. They don't keep Ramayana at home. And if they have, by mistake, Ramayana book is there, they, they will find somebody to give it away. They can throw it, they are afraid of throwing it away. Also. They can sell to a, a waste paper person, he will uh, sell it uh, for weight. No, they don't want to do They sell newspapers and get the money from him. They can give freely, they don't do that. They ca- catch that five rupees also. But this Ramayana book, they, they cannot keep it, they cannot give it away to the old papers, papers. They have to find out some Brahmana who is willing to take it and then dump it upon him. Very cunning, very superstitious. Still that the people who talk of dharma, this and that. Except for us, in our region at least, No, in South <laughs> India you have plenty of them. Then you should not talk about death. Why Vinoba Bhave, he has bemoaned. This is the country where Geta was born. He asked like that. Is this the country where Geta is born? People are, affra- people are afraid of even talking about death. Even talking about death is considered inauspicious. What kind of country it is? This is where Geta was born. Like that Vinoba Bhave asked. So, very, they don't study these things because it talks about death, you know. So they always should talk about wealth, servants, servant maids, gold, silver. Always they should talk about that only. Rajata, Hiranya, Dasa, Dasi, Purusha. Only those things. And dhanam, dhanam. Agni should give dhanam, vayu should give dhanam, long life, ayuhu, and a variety of rituals to increase ayuhu. You see how badly the psychology is affected. And you come to Vedanta, the very first verse in Gita is about death. 
I don't know. Why the first verse of Gita doesn't move? They have converted the Vedanta into a profession. And uh, it has become conceptual Vedanta. You know what is Vedanta? Vedanta is five Jnana Indriyas. Five Karma Indriyas and Mana Buddhi, etc. And then Atma. And then Brahma Jagat Karanam. What kind of karana? Mitta karana, rupa dana karana. Go on talking about it. Don't mention the first verse of Gita. Don't talk about it. Because it is all about death. So, no, no, but still we study Gita. No, no, there is the death of the Arjuna, Pandavas, their death it is. Not our death. We will live. It is a death. Shri Krishna is telling Arjuna uh, that is the death of the Kauravas. All Kauravas die. Not, so it is all about death of the Kauravas. I tell you. What a fall. What a distortion. What a digression. What a deviation. Eh? Amazing. And therefore, now you should not talk about Buddha. You should not uh, study Buddha and you should not talk about uh, Jesus. If you talk about Jesus, oh, he is a Christian. He is converted to Christian. Something like that. Something. All Mahatmas talked about Buddha, Jesus. They all talked about them. We should understand that. Anyway, so now the topic of Murtyu, death has come. Again the verse, Tatasadhi Ropi Narendra Sunu Shritvaiva Mrityam Vishasada Sadhyaha Amsena Samslishya Chakubaragram Robaja Nirvat Nirhrada Vatasvarena I'll give you a small exercise. I was myself surprised. Go to Google and type Nasadiya Sutam. And then Hiran um, Shri Sutam. These two you type. The moment you type Shri Sutam, all entries and the names of Swami, this and that will come, all are Indian. And when you type Nasari Yasuktam, the entries will be less. And all of them are Western entries. A German scholar, an English scholar. You find Swami Vivekananda also in between. Not one Swami you will find. Maybe Swami TV you will find, probably. Because our, it must have been added, because our book has come. Otherwise, you won't find any Swami talking about about Nasri. You see the Google and tell me. Do some research. Do like this. Shri Soktam. How many entries? What is the percentage of Indians? Indian Swamis. Swamis are Gurus. Then Murthunjaya uh, Soktam. Uh, how many entries and how many Indian Gurus? Okay. Nasriya Soktam. How many entries and how many Indian gurus? You make a percentage and see. This is the age of epidemiology, you know. How, how much percentage of uh, infections? This, the, all percentages, the statistics. Do this is statistics and you, I did it. When I was writing the book, Nasadiya Sukta, I wanted to know how was, uh, I found it was not there in India at all. All references are, are outside India. And I, of course, I have to mention Swami Vivekananda talked about it. So well he talked about it. Amazing. So, no surprise, Buddha, Buddhism, Buddha Charitam, etc. has gone outside India. This book, Buddha Charitam, is a Sanskrit book, but published by Buddhist Society of Sri Lanka or somewhere. Indians don't go for it. Indians, they have their Puranic mythological literature, they are happy with all that. 
ततर अरेन्द्र सूनु यू मे वर वै आम से आल दिस बिकॉज इट इज रेलवेट स्वामी विवेकानंद सेड दि डे बुद्धिजम लेफ्ट इंडिया दट वॉज दि बिग्गेस्ट लॉस ऑफ हिंदुइज दट्स वै वी बिकेम स्लेव he connects like that shrutva eva mrutyum vishasada sadyaha amsena amsena samslishya cha kubaragram provacha nirahradavata svarena tata afterwards saha that narendra sunu the prince dhiropi do karejes mrutyum about death shrutvaiva just by hearing about it sadhya immediately veshasada became very weak we cannot you could not stand Huh? He collapsed. That is the Vishada. Same as Vishada. Same as the uh, Vishada. Same. Vishada. Same. Same. Mm. You know why? What happens? Dhatu is Sida. In the lit, it is the lit prayoga. You know, you get a dhitman. Abhyasa. That's why Shasaro. Why is it there? Uh, lit will be Sida. Ti. Sida. Ti. Vishada. The mo. Ah, uh, Vyu Pasarga. Okay. The moment you come into lit, you get a dhitman. okay that's why you find an extra sa which became sha now uh in fact it is the sha which became sa vesha sada uh so therefore he became very weak could not stand on he even sit properly not that he is going to die that such a such an event called death is hanging on the heads of the entire humanity can you believe it so everybody that we know now will die everybody in fact this is a, a this is a meditation i used to do these meditations now it is i have not done at one time i used to do meditation is a, uh you meditate upon your body you watch it of course cl- closing the eyes sitting upright all that you watch the body and then uh, you visualize what will happen to the body after 20 years or 30 years you put some period middle aged people can put 20 or 30 old people can put 10 whatever what will happen to this body so you can visualize it will be it will become a bundle of ashes a bunch of ashes and those ashes also will be dispersed here and there to so put in some uh, river that is what they do throw it into some river and the river what it will do it will just disperse it everywhere it will go into earth so that is what is going to happen to this body that is the meditation then uh, there is one more meditation suppose you have uh, some anger against somebody and consider but this comes in the way therefore what you do is what will happen to the adversary after 30 years he will become ashes and again he will get dispersed by the river so everybody becomes ashes and goes into the earth so you meditate upon it and after some time after doing this meditation two three times the adversity feeling will disappear because adversity for what how long you see the person against whom you are adverse how long you are going to live in the on this earth together what is the common period and both are alive how long a few years maximum so why adversity why not love so that feeling this is a meditation death meditation but uh, suppose uh, i want to do death meditation no swami ji let us not do death and all that it is very inauspicious you do some meditation in which 
you you visualize your sons and daughters doing very well making lots of money that kind of thing <laughs> you look at that huh? anyway coming back to the point he is a courageous person don't think he is a coward he is not a coward and he understood that this thing called death that the democles sword called death is hanging on the head of everybody suddenly he became very weak amsena with one shoulder kobaragram the top of the chariot pole some slishya having embraced yeah he was sitting like this but then he became felt so weak that the chariot pole will be there there will be pole to keep the the ceiling in place and pole here one pole here like that so the nearest pole with his shoulder he embraced means he was leaning on the chariot pole with his shoulder that that much unhappy and distressed he felt so having embraced nirhradavata having a, a having a deep sound swarena with the voice provacha he told means gautama once he starts talking he has such a booming voice nirhrada is booming voice means a very very profound voice he has very deep voice he has how to say in english loud voice it's <laughs> a loud voice nirhrada is a, the, the cloud burst the cloud gives a, thunder a thunderous voice but that is not the contest like thunderous voice he is not fighting with anybody a voice which is very deep and a very very profound that kind of a voice um, he he speaks everybody will be attracted by that booming sound deep sound that sound it is a what they call nowadays they put uh, mics uh, the it, it, it is what kind of sound it makes very three dimensional sound they put mics for this music concert etc they put big big mics there is a name for it so the sound will be coming uh, three dimensional it is not uh, a single dimension uh, two dimensional sound a three dimensional sound there is a name for it so they put uh, such mics and somebody is uh, doing uh, singing uh, stereo sound pa uh, stereo is to stereo a uh, 3d sound 3d sound stereo sound that did the nirhrada vatas parena like that okay okay again tata half words saha that narendra sunu ho the prince gautama dhiropi do courageous don't think that he is a coward that is the idea of dhiropi yeah mulutyum about death shrutvaiva the moment he heard about it sadhya immediately vishasada very much distressed amsena with the shoulder obaragram the top the, uh, the top of the chariot pole samslishya cha having embraced or having held for support that much distress he got that is samslishya nirhradavata uh, having a 3d effect swarena with the voice provacha he told what he told is coming in the next verse it is a very important verse 
I mean, very great things he told. That's why he called Pravacha. You know, it is not Vachanam, it is Pravachanam. The very important thing he told. Okay. Tataha Saha Narendra Sunuhu Gautamaha Dhiropi Mrutyum Prati Mrutyum Udishya Shrokvaiva Sadhyaha Veshasada Amse Nacha Kovaragram Samslishya Nirhradavata Dambhirena Svarena Provacha Son, Sunuhu is son. Sutaha, Sunuhu. Shui Prani Prasave, from the same Dhati. Tasadhi Ropi Narendra Sunuhu. Shrukvaiva Mrutyam Vishasada Sadhyaha. Hamse na samslishya chakuba ragram. Provacha nirhradavatas varena. Yenchenishtan yata prajanam. Ramad yatit chaktabhayascha lokaha. Manam Sishinke Katinan in Runam Swastas Tatha Yadvani Vartamana Yadvani Vartamana Yenjanishtani Yata Prajanam Pramad Yatit Chaktabhayascha lokaha Manam Sishinke Katinan in Runam Swasthas Tatha Yadvani Vartamana. You see, there are certain words which mean death and also which mean complete absorption in meditation. You see, what is death? The body cannot move anymore, does not move anymore. That is death. And what is a meditation? Silent meditation. The mind doesn't move anymore. That is silent meditation. Therefore, it is the death of the mind. And uh, in the classes, in Tathopanishad classes, I was teaching, I was using this word death a lot. In fact, I was telling the audience, the students, are moro, moro, you die. I was telling like that. And I was saying it, I was afraid they will misunderstand. But then uh, I took courage and said, die. You die to the world. That is what I said. You die to the body. Before the body dies, you die to the body. Okay. Before you die to the, before the body dies, you die to the world. When you die to the body, and when you die to the world, you will rise to the truth. You will come alive to the truth. You come awake to the truth. You see how the word death is used. Eh? So, mind becomes quiet. Means that is death. You rise to the truth. To the level of truth, to the higher level of truth. That is death to the lower level. And uh, what is the word used there? Nishtha. Do you remember? Nishtha, Atma Nishtha. The same Nishtha is used here. In the actual sense of death. Okay? Then I will tell you one more word like that. Shanai Shanai Ruparamet. Buddhya dhrati grihitaya atma saustham manah kratva saustham rutyu ho. It is akaranta strilinga shabda. Atmani saustha yasya tat atma saustham tat atma saustham manaha. 
सो सप्तमी बहुव्री व्यधिकरण बहुव्री ही सप्तमी शौंडई ही सो आत्मनि संस्था आकारांत स्त्रीलिंग शब्द मीनिंग मृत्यु हो आल्सो मीनिंग अबाइडेंस एंड यू अबाइड इन द आत्मा यू आर डेड टू द माइंड देवरफॉर यू आर डेड टू द वर्ल्ड देर इज नो वर्ल्ड अदर देन माइंड you should know that eh? if you come across somebody who is an acharya of the vedanta also says that mind is different and world is different mind is real which is outside mind uh, world is real which is outside mind is different that is different you don't say this is that that is the conceptual vedanta okay the one who know who says and who knows and says that there is no world other than the movement of the mind world is the conception of the world itself is the world means the sense organs and the mind together create an illusion and the name of that illusion is the world and one who says that he has now come to the understanding of vedanta okay anyway therefore that word nishtha is death and when you use it in the context of meditation and atma swarupa nishtha etc you need not change the meaning you can still keep the same meaning okay because what you call meditation is the death to the world i used to say meditation gives you an insight that there is a realm different from the worldly things there is a realm there is a dimension in which the world the body and the mind have no relevance that kind of a dimension is there and you realize that not talking about it you realize that in meditation that is the death you see i tell you a story suddenly i remember so in a village or in a town there was one most beautiful young lady okay all the young men of the province or the town wanted to marry her so she said okay you are assemble all of you let us see who will be eligible to marry me 300 of them youth assembled then uh, she told them you by heart 24 hours a time you by the test she has to test and uh, select one guy you have to by heart the lotus sutra of bhagwan buddha there is lotus sutra padma sutra so tries the aphorisms a group of aphorisms which are all about padma some symbolism padma is the pure you know asanga buddha is very great about asanga therefore all that is described in the sutras therefore this lotus sutra you have to by heart it and come back 24 hours time all of the, you should not fail you should by heart it then only you come if you cannot by heart don't come next day morning 24 hours she she arrived there and 10 people came out of 300 they could not by heart the rest of them then she said the problem still remains that i cannot marry 10 of you i have to marry only one again i am giving you 24 hours time you go back and get the meaning of the lotus sutra because do you know the meaning they said no we did not have time for understanding the meaning and all that we only by heart read it 24 hours you said we are ready with it we can recite they all could recite okay another 24 hours every word you should know the meaning and 24 hours they rushed back and took commentaries dictionaries consulted acharyas this that next day morning they have to come back by knowing the entire meaning of the lotus sutra three people came back seven dropped out 
Then she said to them, and now problem remains the same. I cannot marry three, I have to marry one only. I am giving you 24 hours time. Not just the meaning alone. By hearted you have, by hearted you can recite, you know the meaning. That is not enough. You have to taste the flavor of the Lotus Sutra. Lotus, you know, symbolic, you know. Lotus is very fragrant. The flavor of the Lotus Sutra means meditation. The flavor of the meditation. You have to taste it. Did you taste the flavor of the meditation? The, the fragrance of meditation, did you say, taste? They said, no, we did not have time for it. We were busy in understanding the meaning. That is the test. No, no, you taste the flavor of the flavor or fragrance of the meditation and come back. Just by hearting and uh, knowing the meaning is not enough. That is conceptual Vedanta or conceptual Buddhist knowledge. Not enough. You have to meditate the way it is told in the Lotus Sutra. And you have to taste the flavor of that meditation. You have to enjoy the fragrance of that meditation. Then only you have understood the Lotus Sutra. Otherwise, what kind of understanding it is? I'm giving you 24 hours time. Next day morning only one person came. Then she said, I love you. I I, fan, I I take you as my husband. Come with me. And she disappeared. She went away quickly into the palace. And he went behind her. And there the father and mother of the, of the she is a very rich woman. They received him with a lot of uh, Reverence and told, you are our, uh, you are going to marry her, she is our daughter, you are welcome this and that. So please come. They reverentially took him inside. And then uh, they told, she is in that room. The room door was closed. You, you are welcome to go there. And uh, you can court her, you can talk with her with love and all that. They Asked him, go in. Then he opened the door and went inside. It was most beautifully decorated room with a lot of fragrances, flowers, this and that. But she is not there. But there is another door which was closed, opening to the other side of the palace. Therefore, she is not there. Maybe she went through that door outside. Therefore, he opened the door. And it opens into the most beautiful garden, stretching across the horizon. And then uh, he found the footsteps in that garden. That is, the lady walked through that path. And therefore, following the footsteps, he went that way. And then he came to a river. The garden ended, and there was a river. That means the garden is on the bank of the river. And then the palace, etc. Therefore, the sand, in the sand of the river bed, he could find the footsteps and he followed her. Then he, he could not find her. Then he goes to the very edge of the river. The, even there, uh, there is no footsteps were there, but could not find her anywhere. She must have gone into the river. What is this? Then he heard a nice laugh. And then uh, she said, you laugh. You have tasted the flavor of meditation and enjoyed the fragrance of a Padma, Padma Sutra meditation. You, you laugh. You deserve to laugh. Ananda. Then he laughed and then turned back. There was no garden. No palace. Everything disappeared. That is the story. You got the point. Therefore, to know the fragrance of meditation, you have to die. This is how, but I have digressed and told you the story. This is how the words which refer to death apply to meditation and also apply to self-realization. Therefore, please be warned 
self realization is death do you want it you ask this question many of the vedantins even well, you can ask only vedantins <laughs> worldly people anyway don't want death they they avoid death they do all rituals to avoid death vedantins you ask do you want death the one who says yes he is eligible for the realization for the padma sutra <laughs> the lotus sutra of bhagavan buddha this is the story from a janmaster i told it because buddha jantam it fits it's a digression so where are we yanchanishthani yata prajanam pramadyati chakrabhayascha lokaha anam sishinke kathinani nurunam swasthas tatha yadvani vartamana yam cha nishtha niyata prajanam pramadyati chaktabhayaha cha lokaha manam si shinke kathinani nurunam swasthaha tatha hi hi advani vartamana yam des nishtha dat prajanam to people niyata inevitable oh is it so the death is inevitable for people this kind of death the body is lying there you know they are carrying the body so this kind of death is inevitable to people yeah that is very interesting but yet people are not afraid of death as though i mean you see people are afraid of losing the money all the money that they accumulated what will happen to it they are afraid they are afraid they are worried they are worried about the children whether they will do this or that worried about children they are worried about next generation also grandchildren they are worried about landed property this that but they are not worried about death is coming they are not worried about okay that they have okay, that they have and they take all precautions to take care of their children and bring them up and then grandchildren get the children married and so that grandchildren will come the family tree will continue they take all these precautions but uh, they don't take the precaution of getting rid of ignorance so that you will become immortal they don't do any such precautions they become uh, inadvertent pramada you see where they have to worry they have to worry about two things one papa papa they should worry we should not do papa ayo papa if i do what will happen to me that kind of worry they should have they see don't seem to have that worry then i said death is there what what about death what after death who am i what am i what is death they are not worried about that also and uh, they are very cautious about money and other things but they do not have any caution any precautions any attention to this issue of death and uh, immortality that is how the world is lokaha the human being chattabhayascha having given up the worry about death here the worry you have to correctly understand not in the wrong sense they are worried about the death and therefore they are doing some ritual to avoid death you should not take it in that sense are death is waiting therefore i should be cash i should be alert that kind of worry they don't have okay pramadyati very inattentive are inadvertent so this is what is called pramada you see in dhammapada this pramada occupies a primary position in fact there is one section 
one chapter, I suppose, if I remember correctly, it, it, it is called Pramada Vargaha. All verses about Pramada. That is how I remember. If that remembrance is wrong, then at least there are three, four verses about Pramada. And I remember this much. I was talking about Pramada for three classes. Only Pramada. Inadvertence. Means, in English it is called, you bury the head in the sand. That is, in Telugu we have a proverb. The cat drinks milk while closing the eyes. By closing, because if it closes the eyes, it believes that nobody is watching it. If I close the eyes, how can it be that others are not watching? That is the cat, the proverbial cat. Therefore, you don't talk of death. Like the Nubha Bhava said, don't discuss death. Anything which is talking about death, don't keep it with you. Katopanishat, we don't want. You do know, Bhagavad Gita talks about death. Therefore, they, they bring Bhagavad Gita only when somebody dies. When somebody dies, Ghantasala Bhagavad Gita will be put on the mic. Asho, Chia, Anan, Asho, just like that it will be. Uh, even the TV channel also they do that. So one time uh, they, somebody from the TV channel came and asked me, the minister died, you have to come and recite Bhagavad Gita. I said, no, I will not do it. Can I recite anything else? No, you have to recite Bhagavad Gita only. You have the book? Yes, bring it and recite. Which path? Any path you like. So they don't have any particular interest. That is the pramada. They don't know anything about it. Huh? Therefore, people do not worry where they have to worry. They do not pay attention where they have to pay attention. What kind of people are these people? That is what he is saying. Okay? Nurunam of the people, manamsi minds, kathinani, very hard, manye, I think. So these people are they have a very hard, stupid minds. Eh? Means no sensitivity at all. They see the death and it is as if such a thing, we don't even look at it, ignore it, don't even think about it, don't talk about it and go into the world and do all kinds of silly things, making money and practice religion in which the money and pressures occupy the primary position. This is how they have become. That's why the religion, there are two religions. I discussed a lot about this in Kathopanishad classes also. I do this true religion versus the religion of the masses. In the religion of the masses, the goal of worshipping God is make money and enjoy pressures. In this world and hereafter. Okay. In the true religion, the goal of the religion is to realize oneself and become immortal. That is the goal. Therefore, when we talk of religion, that is the religion which masses follow, which is not the valid religion. And the students of Vedanta, and particularly the Acharyas of Vedanta, should not follow that religion. They should rise above that religion. Why they follow that religion? What is the reason for following the religion of the masses? Because they want to collect the masses. So, if you rise above the religion of the masses, you will not have any followers. Only four or five followers will be there. In fact, ten people are listening to the class. That is a great achievement. Whereas some of these gurus who practice or who preach the religion of the masses, their devotees number in tens of thousands of devotees they will have. They want more and more. You see, one Mahatma was there. He is very, uh, he is very un, 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 uh, unassuming and uh, he is not interested to reveal his virtue, etc. He is uh, abiding in himself. 
That's kind of a very simple Mahatma. He is a great Jnani. Okay? Then there is an Acharya was there. The Mahatma is not an Acharya. But there is an Acharya. This Acharya has uh, devotees, not only in India, but also in Europe and North America also. That means he is a very big Acharya. Because he has devotees everywhere. And all his devotees are very highly qualified devotees are there, occupying big, big positions in the government, etc. And then very rich people are his devotees. And be, have li- people, devotees living in big, big palaces, etc. Palace-like houses, they are his devotees. So he came to the beach. And this Mahatma was sitting. Then uh, somehow, to make a long story short, it so happened that he talks with the Mahatma and tells, you know what? My, my devotees are all over the world. You know why? Because I hold the truth in my hand. That's why my devotees are all over the world. Then the Mahatma asked him, he wanted to teach a lesson to him. He asked him, Can, what do you see there? Ocean. Can you hold the ocean in your hand? He said, yeah. And so he takes, a wave comes, he takes the water. I am holding the ocean in your hand. Then the Mahatma says, what you are holding is not the ocean. Then the breeze is coming. Can you hold the breeze in your hand? Then he was thinking, yeah, can I hold the breeze? What you hold is not the breeze. Similarly, what you hold is not the truth. (laughs) You got the point? Therefore, anybody says, I hold the truth, he doesn't have the truth. So just following the religion of the masses, you can attract the masses. By all means, you can do that. But that is not the religion. That is not the true religion. True religion is, you start getting concerned about death. And what is death? And am I mortal or immortal? And then you pay all attention to that issue, that investigation, that inquiry. That is the true religion. But people don't follow the true religion. They they are very insensitive. You see, I said that story, that the Mahatma's mind is very sensitive. Whereas this uh, Acharya, He has a very insensitive mind to the extent that he believes that he holds the truth in his grip. Why? Because he has so many followers. Look at that. One time uh, to this country, one 14 or 13 year old boy has come as the Guru. He is the Guru Maharaj. How he is the Guru? Because his father was a Guru. And the father died, unexpectedly died. And therefore, father is a big guru. And therefore, the gaddi, the position of the guru, came to this son. And therefore, he came. And then married his secretary. A white woman has become his secretary. First, his devotee. Many women also come. One of the women, good looking, white, racist. <laughs> anyway. So, he marries her. Five years he elder. Doesn't matter, good looking, you know. He is a kid. Marries and becomes the citizen. And then Guru Maharaj. So, lot of followers. So many followers. This I read in the newspaper. Somewhere in the newspaper I have read in those days. When I was studying Kavya Patha, this story I read in the newspaper. So many followers and private jet, uh, uh, chartered jet he used to travel along with 100 or 200 devotees. Look at that. <laughs> so people, uh, they are busy collecting devotees. They do not uh, really examine the truth. They do not uh, pursue the truth. They, they don't have worry that uh, time is passing out. And we have to discover the truth quickly. We have to pay attention to that. They don't have that sensitivity. I feel 
their minds are very hardened hardened not having the sensitivity you see kathina when you are ambitious you cannot love there is no love in the ambitious person's heart when you are sorrowful you cannot love when you are afraid you cannot love yeah that is the heart which has no love because it has all these things tatha and also advani in the path of death vartamanah living he indeed swasthah quite comfortable see living in the path of death you should pay attention to that and come out of this slumber of ignorance and try to find the truth they don't do that they are swastha they are living happily really it is like suppose somebody has a disease and he doesn't pay attention about it and doesn't pay attention to get rid of it doesn't pay attention to get back his health and he starts eating and drinking and dancing as if he has no disease similarly here the death is the disease that is bothering everybody and they should pay attention to it and find out the truth of it and discover the immortal atma they don't do all that they are happily drinking and dancing and celebrating though they are all traveling ahead hurtling forward in the path of death the verse is a bit difficult verse in the sense that the words have to be correctly understood in the path in the road on the road they are all on the road of death but they are celebrating swastah means celebratory ha huh? 75th birthday he celebrated i have seen one rich man celebrating 75th birthday and all the guests they are all in suit boot and all that ties all rich and the ladies with the loads of jewelry silk and sarees shining like uh, lightning streaks of lightning they are all assembled in a big hall in a five star hotel hall and a big uh, uh, table on which cake big cake was put and the cake has a seven floors seven layers of their cake and many candles were lit and now everybody was waiting they are all talking among themselves holding a glasses with wine or whatever and they sipping it and talking men and women and uh, music is going on they are all waiting for the the birthday boy to come and he was brought in a wheelchair the birthday boy you know i i see it i saw it and then you believe it eh? he has hold the oxygen mask and the cylinder is also fixed to the wheelchair the wheelchair is such a sophisticated wheelchair that it has provision for fixing a oxygen cylinder and a nice tubing etc without coming in the way it comes from behind and the oxygen mask and he came with a big smile on his face and then who 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 the candles were uh, put up and he cuts the cake all people shout and dance he is in the wheelchair looking like this ha sharam karna chahiye exactly 75th birthday these are that is the advati vartamara allow you understand the word swastha let us say again prajanam to the people iyam des nishtha dat niyakta cha need inevitable lokascha the human being chatta bhaya has given up all concern about death pramadyati is inadvertent 
insensitive hearts why he because advani on the road to death ad vartamana moving forward ya vruti vartane dalit dhatu moving forward they are moving they are hurtling forward on the road of death okay tatha in that way swastha very careless and a celebratory huh? is suppose a 75 year old person what should he do what parikshit has done you are going to die on seven days means okay let me enjoy these seven days is that what he did he studied bhagavatam and understood the self and understood uh, that he is not the body and uh, he became immortal atmanishtha then uh, the serpent has come and uh, the serpent has the name uh, takshaka came and bitten him takshaka thinks who am i am biting i am biting the dead body atma is already merged in the brahma he has to bite based on the shapa therefore he came and bitten uh, the dead body body is already dead dead in the sense he has left the body he has died to the body now you kill the body go ahead and kill the body that is what takshaka did and he thought why am i killing the body chalo i have to do it therefore he did it parikshit has merged in the brahman already they have to do that they don't do that they are celebrating birthday that is what it's not birthday something else yam nishtha prajanam niyata lokah chakta bhaya ಪ್ರಮಾಧ್ಯತಿ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದೂರ್ಣಮುದಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯೂರ್ಣಮಾ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾಂತಿ